Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we are going to draw an apple in Procreate. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. So as usual, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer and do a really rough sketch of the apple. And as you can notice, uh, or as you're going to notice this really soon, the sketch that I was drawing on the iPad in this video looked super, super light. Actually, you cannot see anything. So thanks to editing magic, I'm just going to add the time lapse straight from Procreate right now so you can actually see what I'm doing. But basically all you're doing is just sketching the general shape of the apple as well as the stem. And feel free to just Google an image of an apple if you don't remember what an apple looks like. But you know, it's just like a very simple circular shape with a stem on top. And although it is not the New Year's yet, I already made my resolution, which is to rename my layers. <laughs> so you can see that's what I'm doing here. I just thought it would make it clearer in the tutorials to actually have proper names. That being said, once you have your sketch, you're going to create a new layer on top. And on that layer, we're just going to roughly fill in the color. And I will be using the pencil brushes from my pencil brush set for Procreate, which I will link in the description below, along with a promo code just for you guys, as usual. And if you do have the pencil brushes, go ahead and take the basic filler brush, as well as a color that you want your apple to be, and just really quickly fill in the shape of your apple. All we want at this stage is just to have an idea, again, of where the main shapes and colors are going to be. And it's also a really good time to, you know, give the direction of the texture of your drawing. So to make the brushes work for you, just make sure that you're actually drawing some vertical lines with the brush. And that way you're going to have a lot more to work with later in the process. So feel free to add some more colors as well, because, you know, apples are rarely just one solid color. So you can see here I'm adding some yellow. But if you were to draw a green apple, you could even add some blue tones. Or if you were to draw a yellow apple, well, then you would be adding some like orange spots. But yeah, just pick the same brush and add some really soft color accents. Once you have your main colors, uh, sketched out you're going to pick a nice white and you're also going to really roughly sketch out one big spotlight on your apple nothing complicated again it's just one big blob and once that big blob is done you're going to pick a dark color so probably a dark brown or a really dark green and you're just going to kind of draw an oval around the top of the apple where the stem is because you know an apple is not a perfect sphere it actually has some sort of a dimple at the top where the stem comes out. So you want to make sure that you get this idea of three-dimensional shape by drawing this um, darker oval at the top. And once you do have the main colors laid out, what you're going to do is you're going to refine the shape of the apple and start adding some of the textures and real colors to it. So go ahead and hide your sketch layer and then you're going to pick the 6B brush or any kind of middle hard soft brush as well as a slightly darker shade of your initial color and you're then going to outline the apple if you do have the pencil brushes it's really really great because they behave just like real coloring pencil as you can see here if you're tilting the apple pencil you're actually going to get a really wide soft stroke but if you're using it like a regular angle you're going to get some dark sharp strokes so to outline the apple, I suggest that you use a combination of both. So the really, really outside edge is going to be using sharp strokes, just to make sure that, you know, again, your illustration looks crisp. But then you're going to blend in these sharp strokes with the smoother ones. So yeah, go ahead and outline the apple really quickly with a darker shade of your initial color. Once you're done with the outlines, you're going to go back to your initial color or maybe a little bit lighter and using a soft brush or the pencil brush with a tilt in your apple pencil, you're going to fill in the areas of your apples that you kind of marked as being the main color. So you can see here I'm filling in the reds while avoiding the really white light spot as well as the yellow spots. And we want the texture of the brush to work for us. And for that, we have to understand how the object works in a three-dimensional plan. So here we have something that is very simple. It's almost a sphere. And to give the idea that this sphere is three-dimensional and curved, all you have to do is make sure that most of the strokes that you draw 
in this tutorial or in this project I should say are vertical strokes that are slightly curved as you can see here I'm never going uh, from left to right I'm always going from top to bottom or bottom to top and using a slight curve having that in mind you're going to see that once we get to the top of the apple, so above the like dimple where the stem is, your strokes are going to curve slightly more and they're going to be a bit different. So make sure you really look closely at the tutorial to make sure that you really um, get that part right because it's going to make a big difference in the end if you do or if you don't. Once you're done with your main color, you're going to go back to your secondary color. So in my case, it was a yellow. And with the same brush, again, tilted pencil or a soft brush, you're going to do the same thing. So vertical lines, um, but this time kind of covering the spots that you marked at first as being for your secondary color. Once that is done, I like to go over the apple with the same technique once more, but this time I'm using a slightly lighter version of my main color. And I'm just going over some spots that I feel like are a bit too textured or where the edges are a bit too hard. So basically this, this step is not really about adding more colors, it's more about blending some stuff that doesn't look quite right. So again, you're using either a soft brush or a tilt and pencil. And we're also going to do a very similar thing, but this time picking a slightly darker version of our main color and just going over parts of the apple that are on the bottom, just to give a, a bit more of a three-dimensional feel to the piece. Okay, once we have that, we're going to move on to the stem part of the apple, and that's a bit more tricky, so make sure again that you're really paying attention. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a light, light brown and reactivate the sketch layer just so we can see what we're doing. But basically we're just going to fill in the shape that we had initially sketched for the stem. And then we can hide the sketch layer just to make sure that we don't draw on it because that's something that I always do. And we're then going to pick a dark color. So kind of a dark yellow, almost a dark green in some cases as well. And you're going to draw some curved vertical lines that kind of shoot from where the stem comes out of the apple. That might sound weird, <laughs> but look at the tutorial and it's going to make total sense. So these lines are just there to help, again, give it a, a, an idea of the direction of the three-dimensional object. And for some reason here, my iPad decided it was tired and wanted to take a nap and lower the luminosity. So I'm sorry about that, but we're going to keep going nonetheless. And the next thing we have to do is kind of outline this stem a little bit more. So go ahead and pick a lighter color and you're going to kind of draw a line on the outside edge uh, on the left, as well as just a blob on the top. So yeah, you're going to pick a slightly lighter color once again and do kind of the same thing. And finally, we're going to take a darker color and we're going to underline the blob that we did at the top of the stem and we're going to just add some texture. So again, some vertical lines that just kind of follow the shape of the stem. And don't worry too much about it because it's going to be really small in the final product anyway. So just do something really rough to show that there is something happening on the stem, but again, don't worry about it, not a big deal. So this next step is for people who do have the pencil brushes. So if you don't, feel free to skip ahead. I will leave a timestamp somewhere in the video. But if you do, we're going to add more textures to the apple. So go ahead and create a new layer and pick the main color that you had picked at first. So in my case, a bright red maybe slightly darker <laughs> and you're going to pick one of the textured brush so I went with the crosshatch textured brush and you're going to just add some random crosshatch texture where you feel like your apple might need it and as you can see or as you saw in the zoom in just then it doesn't add a whole lot but at the same time, it does. <laughs> and it's really easy to do. And you can see here, I changed to the secondary color to kind of highlight um, that spot as well. But it's just going to make a difference in making your piece look more finished and professional at the end. And it takes just a few seconds. So feel free to do it or not. But basically all you have to do is just kind of 
um, eye drops and the colors on the apple and kind of fill them in with uh, the cross hatches as well. Okay, this next step is super easy. We're just going to clean the edges of the apple a little bit. And you can pick the eraser brush that you want. I don't know if you know about that, but if you double tap on the eraser icon at the top, you can open the brush library. And if you do have the pencil brush set, you can set your eraser to the eraser brush shape. So yeah, anyway, erase the outside of your apple just to make it a little bit cleaner. And if you did create some cross hatch texture in the previous step, make sure that you merge the two layers by squishing them with your two fingers. Otherwise, you'll just have to erase twice. And I mean, who has time for that? <laughs> We're now going to add more color variation, shadows and light to the apple. So make sure you have the main apple layer selected. And with the selection tool set to freehand, you're just going to draw some sort of a wobbly shape around the bottom part of the apple. And you're going to feather that shape around 30%. Then from the adjustment panel, you're going to select hue, saturation, and brightness, select layer, and you're going to lower the brightness and maybe play with the saturation and the hue a little bit. But the most important part is just that you lower the brightness because we're going to use that technique to add some shadows on the bottom of the apple. We're going to reuse this technique to add some color variation on the apple, kind of like if there was some sort of a like reflection on it. So on the right side, go ahead and draw another wobbly shape that you're going to once again feather around 30%. And using hue, saturation, and brightness set to the entire layer, you're going to shift the hue. So in my case, as you can see, I'm shifting it towards the left to get something that is a bit more purple blue. And you might have to tweak a little bit, but you're probably going to end up lowering the saturation and maybe lifting up the brightness a little bit. But you just want to make sure that your apple is not just like one color. You want to give it the impression that it is in a real environment and in a real environment you would have different colored lights kind of bouncing on the apple. So we're going to use this technique once more, but this time we're going to add just like a normal light on the top of the apple. So just draw like an almost oval shape on the top left and feathering it around 30%. And this time we're just going to lift up the brightness a little bit. And you can see I tweaked the hue here, but I put it back where it was. So really just lifting up the brightness to put more emphasis on this three dimensional shape that we have. We're also going to put more emphasis on the light that we have on the left. So go ahead and create a new layer and pick the uh, 4B brush as well as a white color, well, a white color, as well as white. <laughs> and you're just going to draw a white blob over the white area that you already had on Apple. And we're going to turn that layer blending mode to add. So clicking on the end next to the little check mark, you're going to be able to change the blending mode and you're probably going to have to lower the opacity of that, of that layer quite a lot. So as you can see, uh, I think I set mine to around like 15% or 20%, something like that. And for some reason here, my camera decided to have some sort of a party and um, flicker the lights. So I'm really sorry about that, but we're almost done. So I guess it's fine. We're going to create a new layer. Actually, um, I noticed that I slipped up and <laughs> forgot to name my layer. So if you did that to rename your layer and then create a new layer that we're going to call dots. And on this layer, we're just going to add some little speckled effect to the apple. So set it to overlay and with still your white color and um, the 2B brush, I think, yep set to a fairly small size, all you're going to do is add some little dots and speckles on the apple. Because if you look at a real apple, if you have one at home or if you just Google it, you're going to notice that they have some like white little spots all over them. And that's another really good occasion to reinforce this idea of three dimensional um, shape. And what I mean by that is as you can see, first of all, all your dots are kind of going to be irregular. You don't want to have a strict pattern of dots. You just want to sprinkle them all over the apple. And you're going to sprinkle them in different ways depending on where you are on the apple. So the closer to you get to the edges, the closer the dots are going to be to each other and the smaller they're going to be. And that's basically because the three-dimensional shape is going away from you. So 
uh, everything is going to be squished. So I'm going to spare you from this flickering madness that is my screen right now. And again, I apologize for it. I'm sorry. But basically all you have to do is just fill in your apple with little spots and you're going to have a really cool final result. So there you go. This is how to draw an apple in Procreate. If you do use this tutorial, I would love to see the results. So make sure to share them with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you want to check out the brushes that I've been using, they will be linked in the description below again with a promo code. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really, really does help the channel. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every week.